Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to get started now. A little bit late, so we're going to rush through this probably and get into Eric's talk. Uh, welcome to the Boston WordPress Meetup for June. The Wi-Fi code is WP0624 in the Cambridge Network. You can visit our website, bostonwp.org. Tweet all the things. We'll retweet you guys and then talk to each other on Twitter. It makes us look awesome. <laughs> Hashtag BostonWP. So first, a uh, big thank you to Microsoft Nerd. They've been hosting us for uh, since 2009. Uh, a, they do a lot of great things for us, just letting us have the space, both spaces, so, uh, and eventually WordCamp. So. Uh, we have to give thanks to HostGator. Um, they've supported us um, for the past couple of years. Um, it's great for the beginners, one-click install. Um, tonight's the pizza sponsor for tonight is WP Engine. Um, feel free to check out WPEngine.com. Um, if, if you want to use the, the code WP Meetup Boston 2013 for one free month of hosting on their personal plan. <coughs> I forgot the t-shirts too. I'll bring them next we'll month. We'll have shirts sometime. Just keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have a website, bostonwp.org. Uh, it's where you can find uh, videos from previous meetups. We have a job board on there. It works. Uh, so you can submit your jobs. So, uh, if we don't approve it right away, email us separately. We'll approve it. Um, we're going to start promoting that more on the Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. We have forums. Um, not much going on there right now. Make it happen. What are any questions or anything? Uh, we do check them. And uh, we have a GitHub account. It's soon because it's not really populated yet, but there is some stuff on there, and it's up to you guys to make it awesome. So if you guys have ideas, talk to me, talk to Kadam, talk to Kurt, uh, and we'll do something cool on it. Um, for those of you who need to contact us, here's our long list. Me, John, Tom, and Rako in the back. Eric's right here. Adam. Adam just disappeared. Um, <laughs> Jesse was not here, and Kelly and Mel. No, oh, there's Captain. There's Captain. Uh, so yeah, we have Facebook, facebook.com slash bostonwp. Not a lot going on in there yet, but we're working that out. Twitter is more active. Uh, we post it pretty regularly, so check that out. Like I said, we'll retweet things if you guys talk about us and post pictures or whatever. Uh, YouTube, search for Boston WP. We just moved all of our videos from previous meetups over there, so you can find everything there. Comment, like, subscribe makes us look more awesome. Same with Google+. Plus. Uh, everyone's doing it. So. Be like the cool kids. I have a question. Yes. You move your videos to YouTube from where? Blip. Blip. What was it? Blip. 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 Why did you like Blip? Have you heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> Originally, Blip was the, was the uh, only hosting provider that allowed videos up to a gig. Now that YouTube has changed their terms of agreement so you can upload larger videos and longer videos, <laughs> we migrated everything over. It's better for SEO, too. Yeah, so there's close to 200 videos on that site right now. So anything that's been from when they started video, <laughs> no, I, I agree that uh, Blip is small and not good for SEO, but I want to hear them too. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, a it's official. Them too, it's searchable. Right. Yeah, we, we used Brightcove at my workplace, and great for embedding videos, but nobody goes to Brightcove yeah. to find videos. They go to YouTube. So we have this space through September, actually October too, um, where we'll be having WordCamp Boston 2013. Um, Dates October 25th, 26th, and 27th, so it's three days this year. Um, it's going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, plans are still in work. Just check the website every day, and then eventually there will be something awesome on there. It's not smaller, it's more exclusive. I like this. <laughs> yes. Um, other WordPress meetups. Uh, there's the Manchester, New Hampshire WordPress Dev and Users Meetup, <clears throat> and there's also the Providence WordPress Meetup. Um, so if you're coming in from up north or down south, be sure to check them out too. I'm pretty sure if you just go to wordpress.meetup.com, you can find all of the WordPress meetups, um, and then just find one you like best. Yes. <laughs> um, there's also a WordPress event, a beginner SEO workshop. It's going to be three hours from 9 to noon. It's Tuesday, June 23rd in Weymouth. Um, 
can visit the meetup page for more information, or if you need more information, you can ask Tom and Rico. Uh, where am I? Okay. Any questions? So, like we said, we have a job board. Um, there are a few things on there, so check that out when you get a chance. I think there's like two or three like recent listings there. But anyone here right now have any jobs available? Raise your hand, call it out. There's an awesome crowd right now, so it's a good time to do that. Anyone looking to hire? Automatic yep. is always hiring amazing engineers, happiness engineers. If you're amazing or happiness engineer. <laughs> <laughs> And I was actually, if I'm looking for some freelance WordPress developers, uh, the range of skill sets. So if you're looking for some spirit or some side work or something, come talk to me and I can hook you guys up. All right. <clears throat> cool, work at time. Uh, sessions tonight. We're going to start with Eric's, the beginner talk. Uh, he's, what's new with WordPress 3.6? And then we're going to go to Brad. Um, a critical piece missing in your WordPress dev workflow. And Brad is coming from Nova Scotia. <coughs> so... Give him a warm welcome. Uh, oh, you want to mention? Yep, and uh, some of us will be outside doing office hours. If you guys have any questions um, about WordPress or something more specific that we can answer in about 15 minutes, uh, feel free to come out there and uh, we'll try and help you out. Any other questions before we start? Awesome. Thanks, guys. My name is Eric Hitter. I'm one of the organizers here for the meetup, and I work for uh, Automatic, working on WordPress.com. I uh, want to go through some of the new stuff that we're going to see in 3.6, which is the next release. We're working on it now, and hopefully within the month we should have the next release out with any luck. We'll see how that goes. It was supposed to be out last month. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> again... I work at Automatic. I've uh, been a developer here in the Boston area for a little while, working uh, exclusively with WordPress for a good long time. Um, this is sort of the why you should care about anything I have to say sort of thing, but blah, blah, blah. Uh, the slides are up. Uh, I put the link out there earlier uh, on Twitter. I'm ET Hitter on Twitter. So if you want to follow along or want to see the slides later, you'll find the link there. Uh, I mentioned it at the very end, and we'll link them up on the Meetup site as well. So 3.6. Uh, the focus with 3.6 was the editing experience. Everything from the actual interface to some of the underlying uh, features that are more developer focused, but it really was entirely focused on editing, editing your content. Um, so this is from back in it's either December or January. Mark Jakewith posted this. He was the uh, release lead for 3.6, and he said, this is my idea for what we're going to work on at 3.6. What are people interested in this? And then there was a time left for people to comment on this thread and say, hey, I'm really interested in working on revisions or contributing to enhancements to the editorial workflow, things like that. And it became a very content editing focused release. So from that thread, these are sort of the things that came out of it that people really had an interest in enhancing, uh, with the exception of 2013, that sort of an aberration from this list, but things like the autosave, the post-locking uh, method, editorial flow, um, some enhancements to post formats, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, so these were the, the main points that were uh, worked on for 3.6. There's a ton of underlying enhancements to the APIs, bug fixes, other general code maintenance that goes along with this, but these are the big sort of headline shiny things that people are going to notice when they get into WordPress. Uh, before we get to the fun new things, we're going to talk briefly about what got dropped. So two things, um, editorial flow was the first one, and then recently, as you may have seen, the whole new post formats UI was dropped. Um, editorial flow, we dropped back in February because, so the one that I'm wearing is not doing anything. Fantastic. Um, we dropped editorial flow back in February because as they were trying to figure out the scope of it, just more and more questions came up and it became clear that there could probably have been an entire release just on editorial flow or maybe two. 
So they put that aside, but they were looking at everything from, uh, if you've ever used the edit flow plugin, bringing a lot of that in, making it so that you can have drafts of published posts for a revision to a published post, drafting that, scheduling that to be uh, future released, things along those lines. And it became so hairy and so involved with a lot of the APIs that were changing as part of 3.6 that they just decided, we're going to put this off, we'll come back to this later on when things are a little more defined and the changes that we do get in 3.6, once those are there and we can build on that. The more recent one that got dropped was the new post formats UI. So if you were running trunk at any point along the way or saw screenshots, it had uh, this very uh, present uh, user interface right above the content editing area where instead of it being that little uh, meta box would just, you know, so like this is a status post or this is a link post or, and so on. There was a lot of UI that went with posting a link so that we could do fun things and themes with all of this data. Instead of all of this stuff just getting dumped into the content, the idea was let's make this easier for themers to do really neat things in the way that Tumblr and some of the other competitors do a lot with the information. If you go and create a post on one of those services and choose one of the formats, they do a lot more with it. And it was worked on for uh, a, a few months, probably five months, somewhere in that neighborhood, just trying to get the UI right, trying to get all of the underlying code changes just quite right. And they ultimately decided uh, just a couple of weeks ago, May 29th, that this, there were still too many questions. So it got pulled, it's gonna be developed in a plugin so if you saw the interface at any point and thought, hey, that's really cool, it will be released in a plugin, and they'll continue to work on it there, and eventually the stuff will get rolled back into WordPress proper. But they're gonna, they have a little more flexibility by doing it in a plugin, so you can sort out some of the issues that arose with this. Um, but it took a long time, it was really a, a difficult decision for, uh, for Mark to make to pull that, but it just, wasn't something that would be done well enough for it to be in core and for us to have this for the next however many years and have to deal with this going forward. So in the long run, it's better for the project. A lot of people were disappointed that it got pulled ahead of time, but we're really we're better off in the long run because we can do it really well instead of the sort of par-baked approach that we had. So that's the bad news. These are the things that won't be coming. If you were really excited about those, sorry. Um, <laughs> First thing that is really a, a pretty neat aspect of 3.6 is a lot of enhancements to autosave. So there was sort of this mantra with this release that you should never lose your content. Doesn't really matter what happens, but your content should be preserved in a lot of different cases where right now you can end up losing content. So autosave currently, it's there in 3.5, and you may have seen this little there is an autosave of this post thing. And that was really the extent of autosave. It did it in the background through the editor periodically, but required that you were still connected to the web. Uh, if your browser <coughs> crashed and it was in between uh, autosaves, tough luck, anything you had there is just gone. So the first thing that they did, if you lose your network connection, say you're on the train, you're on a plane, whatever, you, your connection drops out, WordPress is checking in the background to see if you're still connected, drops the connection, and WordPress will tell you, hey, you're no longer connected to the server. Stops you from trying to save anything. So if you've ever written this whole post, don't notice that your network connection has dropped, hit publish and you get this Chrome, I can't connect to this page thing and your content's gone, it doesn't happen anymore. You, the publish button is grayed out. It's totally disabled for you. WordPress continues to check in the background to see if the server connection comes back. When it does, this little message goes away. You don't have to do anything. Your publish button comes back. So that's cool. That's keeping you from trying to save things. But what happens if your browser crashes? Or for whatever reason, you're working on something, your network connection drops, you walk away, you miss that uh, you have all of this content, something goes sideways there. Well, that's where the next piece comes in. Taking advantage of new uh, fancy browsers, you can actually store content in the browser as they're typing along. So what happens now, when you're writing your post, WordPress is keeping a backup copy of it in your browser on your local machine. So your network connection goes away and you see that error from the last page. If you, for whatever reason, close the browser tab, again, your browser crashes, the post is saved in the browser. 
So when you come back into WordPress, you get this uh, message at the top of the screen. There's a backup of the post in the browser that's newer than what is shown in the editor, what's there on the server. WordPress gives you the option to restore the backup, and then it just seamlessly syncs all of that content back up to the server. So you can lose your connection. Again, your browser can crash. You're not going to lose your content. You can see where this focus really starts to come in. Another challenge that people run into a lot, who's ever been writing a post in WordPress and your session expires and suddenly you're not logged into WordPress? You go to hit the publish button, you are not logged in. Well, now WordPress is also checking for this in the background. And instead of sending you to the regular WordPress login page, it's going to pop up this window here and let you log right back in without having to leave the page. You log in, continue on your way. So three ways that we've enhanced autosaves so that you're considerably less likely to lose your content. And what's neat with this, this is built on top of a new, uh, what they're calling the Heartbeat API, and it's available to developers to extend. So Core does these basic things with it, and plugin developers, theme authors can continue to build upon that and do neat things. Um, so after autosaves, post locking, because this is another similar sort of problem if you're in an instance of WordPress where you have multiple authors and you have, say, editors who need to go in and review a post that, uh, so before being published, things like that, we're coming back to the never losing your content. WordPress prior to 3.6 didn't do a great job of saying that this person is editing the content and nobody else should make changes to it right now. You could go in, show you a little warning. Looks like that. Warning, ET hitter is currently editing this post. Doesn't do anything to stop you from hitting the publish button and overwriting that saving over the changes. This was uh, 3.5 and earlier, and it's a fairly minimal thing at the top of the screen. Someone could easily overlook it. So what we've done now, if you're looking at your post list, it'll show you. Eric is currently editing. That's nice. So you can see at a glance, if you're looking at your posts, you can see which of the posts are locked because there's another user in there. If you decided to click on the edit link and still go into that post, or you were on the front end and clicked the edit link in the toolbar, instead of just showing that little red error message across the top of the screen, we're going to give you this nice little uh, popover that says, Eric is still is working on this. What do you want to do? You can preview it as it exists. If you click the take over button, you're now telling WordPress that I really don't care what Eric is doing right now. I want to edit this post. Great. It can happen. Somebody leaves it open on their computer. They go to lunch. You need to get in and do something on it. Fine. There are a lot of use cases for that, but we're going to make it pretty apparent and deliberate on someone's part that you're taking this post over, that you recognize they, there could be content that, uh, that they were working on. So this is great now. You take over, you start editing. What if that other person comes back and wants to start editing again? So now you're back into this fight of who is currently editing. Well, this is what you end up seeing. So-and-so has taken over editing, and you can't go back into the post. Just You've got the go to all posts button, brings you back to the post list. <laughs> now WordPress, because of the autosave enhancements, has all of your content saved in revisions in your browser, saved in autosaves on the server, so your, your content's not necessarily lost, but you at least know, you know, who went in, who changed my post? We'll tell you about it and let you get back to, uh, get back to editing it if you need to. So that's the enhancements to post locking, just really cleaning up that experience and making it much more apparent what's going on, much more deliberate on the editor's part that, yes, indeed, you are taking this over, and you recognize that this is a very deliberate action. It's just didn't miss that the, the notice was across the top there. So continuing along with this, this is not so much directly related to not losing your content, but making it easier to work with some of the tools that are built into WordPress. So we've had post revisions for a long time now, and this is what the interface looked like before. Just a list of all of the different revisions. It's got a date, uh, the date and the time, and you can toggle these little radio buttons here and compare different revisions, but it reloads the page each time. It doesn't give you a whole lot of context. And in this revision here, I could have added a period. It could have been very trivial. Another one of these could have been where the bulk of this post, I mean, if we're talking about Hello World, of course, where the bulk of this content came from. So you really have no indication that if you're trying to find 
a specific revision from that time. I, I know I, I added all of this content or I took all of this stuff out. You just have to sit and keep comparing until you find the one. Not the most user-friendly experience. So now we have much slicker looking UI, but we've also taken advantage of some new fun JavaScript stuff that we have built in before so that this, you just drag this and slide it across. It's already figured out all of the revisions. It doesn't require the page to reload. Yeah. Happens in real time. When you load the page, it loads all of this information in. And as you drag that from one to the other, in real time, it will update the comparison down below. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you mind if we clap like an app? It, it really, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. To address the problem of which of these was a substantial change, which of these is a minor thing, you'll notice that the each revision, some of the lines are thicker than others. Indicates how much of a change there was there. So in this case here, I probably wrote most of this post and then tweaked some formatting. I probably don't care about what happened there. I mis misspelled something, added a, some punctuation or whatever. Oh, and then a couple of other major changes. Okay, that's not too bad. By default, you're always comparing to whatever the uh, current published version is. But as we had before, you can compare to arbitrary versions. There's a little checkbox there. You check that, and instead of having the one toggle, now you've got the two, and you can drag these around. And in the same way, you get the real-time updating of the diffs down below here. You find the one that you want to compare to, click Restore This Revision, WordPress does this thing as it did. Yep. What is the trigger for autosave again? Is it, is it time or is it action? It, it was time. It's now uh, content changing in the editor interface. That's part of the new Heartbeat API. And what it does is it, it detects all of those changes and stores them in your browser and then periodically syncs those things back to the server. So it's not constantly going back and forth with your web server, but it does periodically take those things from the browser and send them back to your WordPress site. It's really a matter of personal preference and also specific to the site. If you have a site where you're ending up with hundreds of revisions on a given post, you may want to start purging those because at some point, storing that much data doesn't give you a lot of benefit. It's too much really to deal with in any meaningful way. I mean, yes, you can come in here and the interface does scale to posts with many, many revisions. It adds paging in to make this a, a fairly manageable interface. But it really depends on your, your use case. Um, <coughs> on WordPress.com, for some of our sites, we store all of the revisions ever. Others, we limit it down. It really depends on how much of that information is going to be useful down the line to you. And uh, we'll talk about on the next slide some, uh, some enhancements that we introduced as part of this to make that a little more manageable. But you had a question. Well, I, I just have a couple, but I was thinking, is there any way to control similar to his question because I've been noticing it's been actually interfering with my editing process sometimes. So I'm in the code and I'm trying to type something because mm -hmm. it's auto-saving and I really have a lot more to do. And I don't believe kind of that there's a way to control how frequently auto it auto-saves. I haven't looked that closely at the code and there may be something in there. Uh, there may, at the very least, be a control over how frequently it, it syncs that back to the server. But I would have to look at the code. I haven't. I my focus was mostly on the revisions uh, stuff in this release. So I really, other than looking at it and saying, "Oh, that's really cool," <laughs> I haven't worked with the auto saving code at all. I see. And when it saves to the server, uh, to the browser, I mean, maybe there are people who understand that. I wasn't really sure where exactly in the browser would you find that. Um, if you're familiar at all with the the Chrome Developer Tools or something like Firebug, you can get at the data there. But uh, it's an HTML5 thing called uh, local storage. Oh, okay. It's just it's a, one of the new HTML5 web standards. And it's oh. built into the modern browsers, and it just provides a way for websites to save arbitrary data within the, the particular browser. Okay. So the new UI is really great. A couple of changes that came in along with this. It used to be that the number of revisions that WordPress stored was defined in a constant, which means you defined it once, and it was used for any and every post type. 
posts pages, you have a, a theme that registered custom post types or a plugin or whatever. <coughs> whatever you set that value to, that's all you got regardless of the post type. So your posts, you may want to save a certain number, but if you're using a CSS editor that's storing the CSS as post types, you may not want to store as many revisions. Or perhaps you want to store more revisions for that particular post type and fewer for posts themselves. Prior to 3.6, you didn't have any control over that. But in 3.6, we introduced the ability to control how many revisions are saved based on post type, and you could even do it on a specific post. <laughs> if you wanted to get that crazy with, we gave you a filter. So if you're using the constant now, that setting will uh, be obeyed going forward, but then plugin authors could write something to control how many revisions are saved, depending on what their particular post type is doing. There's a lot of opportunity there for expansion upon that, and it's something that I think a lot of people and hosts especially are going to appreciate because in those situations where you don't want to necessarily store a thousand revisions for every single post type you have, you now have the ability to control that. Um, we also fixed a, a fun little bug where the wrong author would be shown for revisions. So that's only been around for like six years. We fixed that one finally. Um, and it used to be that you could end up with a revision and an autosave that were identical just based on when things hit WordPress and what was going on, fixed that as well. So reducing some of the clutter and also giving you a lot of control over how much of the clutter we store for you. Uh, the default behavior doesn't change, so WordPress by default will just save everything, all of the revisions from forever. That's still the default if you install WordPress, but if you've made changes to that using the constant that's obeyed, just giving you more control over things. The next thing, this is not really necessarily related to 3.6 and the focus in 3.6, but we thought that this year we should have a, a new default theme before, say, December of the last year. <laughs> so, uh, Yoen, I uh, cannot remember his last name, that's fantastic, uh, designed this, he's a designer at Automatic, uh, did this theme, it's very bold, it's a, a separation from what the last theme was, which was very minimalist takes advantage of post formats with uh, different colors and highlights and things, uh, has various headers built in, just sort of a very colorful, fun theme. Uh, this will be bundled with 3.6. It's available on WordPress.com now, and if you wanted to play with it and see all of the fancy things, the colors and post types and such, uh, post formats from the colors and things, it's at... Uh, 2013demo.wordpress.com. And the very last thing that we'll, uh, that we'll cover is a little bit of cleanup that was done in the, the menus interface. So this is the old interface, and people found this relatively confusing uh, for a number of reasons. One, what these things over here are related to isn't totally clear. So the fact that theme locations has one specific function, which is you're telling WordPress, show this menu in this particular place, and then right below it you have these boxes that have a very similar visual appearance, but this is where you're generating the menus out of, leads to a fair amount of confusion. So what they've done is cleaned this interface up. They did a lot of user testing to make it a little more apparent what's going on in here. So that theme locations box, it's now its own tab. In a lot of cases, you set your theme locations once, unless you change your theme again or add a new one, you're not dealing with that on a regular basis. You don't need that to be as apparent an interaction as it was in the old UI. The old UI, very prominent placement, top left corner here, screaming at you. Well, I don't really care, I've set my theme locations, leave me alone. So now, we've moved it to a separate tab. Condensed this into a more linked uh, interface, so each of the available uh, things that you can put into the menu, the boxes for those are all joined together. Uh, and editing a menu, instead of having the tabs before where you saw all of your menus across the top, there were tabs upon tabs and things. Trying to reduce how many layers of tabs we have, so when you want to choose the menu you edit, it's in a drop down now instead of just a tab and a tab and more tabs. Fairly minor things, but with the user testing that was done around this, really, really helped people understand what's going on in here and reduced a lot of the confusion. 
And with that, we've got time for questions. Yes? I just noticed the links. I mean, I think I've used it before, but does it have to be an internal link to your website, or can it be an external link? That uh, links here, this would actually be uh, the link manager that's in WordPress. Oh, so the link manager. Okay. Yep. Um, it is still in there, even though we disguised the UI, but the particular site I took the screenshot from has been on WordPress for long enough that that's still hanging around. Um, and there are other items. We, by default, there are some that aren't shown, like posts. So there is can be one of these boxes for all of the posts on your site. It's not displayed by default, but if you see up in the corner here, there's this little screen options thing. If you click on that, it will bring down this uh, interface that lets you choose other types of content to display here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get shown by default, but it, it is in there hiding. Yep. It is not in, on the front end by default. You could enable it on the front end. It's a JavaScript file that you would just need to enqueue on the front end. Uh, there was a short period of time where in, excuse me, in trunk it was enabled on the front end, and they decided that it was probably unnecessary to have it there because by and large you're not doing a lot of content editing from the front end. Certain themes may enable that, and that could be a situation where your theme may want to turn the Heartbeat API on. There's a ticket about this uh, in core where they did all of the work on it, and there's a lengthy discussion about whether or not to have the Heartbeat API on the front end. Um, so it works on the front end. It was there for a while. They just decided that the use for that was probably pretty limited. Yes? I know um, somewhere on WordPress.org it says the original launch date for 3.6 was May 20th. Do we have a new date? No. Other than when it's done? No, so uh, they haven't announced a new date. Um, you may have noticed on Friday, uh, WordPress 3.5.2 was released, a little bit of a security fix. That delayed things because the whole core team was focused on that for better part of almost two weeks, getting those changes put together. So that was a delay. Um, all of those changes are reflected in 3.6 now. Um, the biggest thing right now that's delaying it is that when they made the decision on May 29th to pull out all of the post format stuff, they now have to go back through all of the changes that were made related to that, extract those into this plugin, and then make sure that nothing broke. So that's the process they're going through right now, is untangling all of those changes. Because that would have been the, really the, the big substantial change in 3.6, would have been the post formats UI. And there's very little of WordPress that that didn't touch. So it's just untangling that. Uh, I would hope within the month we might get it, but there hasn't been any official date. I know people are eager for it, and I think now that the 3.5.2 the security release is out there, they hopefully we'll hear something about that soon so that people can start to plan for it. But, um, I've been running it on my site for a while now. It's pretty stable. I get all of about four visitors, and, you know, a little more tonight, but um, yeah, it's working for me. If you want to live dangerously, uh, you can certainly, certainly upgrade, and we're using it on, using it on WordPress.com. Seems to be working out pretty well so far. So. Questions? Yes. Um, any impact on the server database? Um, I'm not aware of anything particular that was done uh, in that regard. I, none of the database tables changed in any meaningful way. There were no new tables, no columns dropped or anything along those lines. Uh, there's always little optimizations and things that are made as part of the general code cleanup. Uh, that's not anything that I covered here tonight, but they, there's always a team of people in each release going through, fixing bugs, um, optimizing queries, things like that. But I'm not aware of anything offhand. I don't know anybody there in the were, front. Like, no schema changes, but the revisions, the way the revisions were stored changed because of the wrong post out there. Right. So we're... There's a, a, you could have a little bit of a performance hit when you upgrade because uh, with that bug I mentioned where the wrong author was shown for revisions, there's a fixing process built into the upgrade mechanism. So the first time you go through, if you have a lot of revisions, there could be some, uh, some impact there. But that it runs one time. I believe that it just runs the one time when it first detects that there are unfixed posts. And after that, uh, nothing too substantial, I don't think. Any other questions? Okay. Um, the slides, uh, as I mentioned, I put them out on Twitter, and they're linked there on the blog. Uh, 
a whole bunch of the uh, items in the very first few slides are links to the relevant uh, discussions around those things if you wanted to learn more about specific items there. Uh, so I linked, uh, linked all sorts of things within the slides. Thank you.